Good morning, MEC. Thank you for letting me be here today. I thought they might play a little Elvis music when I came up here, but that's good stuff too. Let me say thank you all for letting me stop by this morning for a minute to visit with you. Thank you for pulling our business community together for events like Hobnob. I think it's so important for us to come together and talk about our state. To hear from us as candidates, you should want to hear from and be able to hear from those of us seeking to have the top job in the state of Mississippi. Quite frankly, it's one of the reasons I challenged Tate Reeves to five debates. He chickened out of four of them, but we will have one on Wednesday night of next week. To make sure the people in this state understand where we stand on issues. Now, we've got serious problems in Mississippi. Problems that require a governor to give them attention. Not only to make sure that we're doing the right thing by the people of this state, but we're also protecting the future of Mississippi. We've got two crises going on right now in this state that everybody under the sound of my voice should be concerned about. First is our health care crisis. Now I know when Tate comes up here in a minute, he's not going to mention anything about it. He doesn't want to talk about the problems we have in health care in Mississippi during an election year, but we're going to talk about it for my nine minutes that are left. We have a serious issue in Mississippi where 34 of our hospitals are at risk of closure. Five hospitals have gone to only inpatient, have canceled inpatient care. Now they've become a 24-hour facility, and if you need to stay more than 24 hours, you have to go to a larger hospital. Not only hurting that hospital and that community, but putting strain on our larger hospitals in Mississippi. We have a solution that's staring us in the face. And but for the pettiness of Tate Reeves, the partisanship, the cheapness of politics, we would expand Medicaid right now. And I make this pledge to you. If I'm elected governor, we'll take steps on day one to begin the road to expand Medicaid without wasting any time. We have given our money away to 40 other states long enough. Long enough. And but for politics, the cheap partisan politics, that quite frankly I don't get into, but for politics, we would have already expanded Medicaid in Mississippi. The truth is, I'm a Democrat, I'm running against a Republican, but I don't get into partisanship. I believe those sweet spots in state government are the places where Democrats and Republicans can come together and work together to find a solution. If Donald Trump had been President of the United States and had passed a bill like the Affordable Care Act that would benefit 230,000 working Americans, Brandon Presley would have supported it in five seconds. I would not have let our state lose billions of dollars like Tate Reeves has allowed to happen. Now we're talking about 230,000 working people that would benefit from Medicaid expansion. We're talking about folks that are working in this facility today. People like my mama that sold pants at Reeves Manufacturing in Nettleton ended up becoming a pre-K pre teacher. She worked every single day. Worked to put food on the table. My daddy was murdered the first day I was in the third grade. She worked every day raising me and my brother and my sister. She knew something was wrong. She knew her health wasn't good, but she couldn't do something that many Mississippians this morning couldn't do. She couldn't afford to go to the doctor. She couldn't afford to take off work. She had worked at a job where she didn't have health insurance. So let me tell you something. Unlike some national Democrats that are dead wrong, I don't blame the business community. Small business owners are out there doing their very best to keep their doors open and be able to give jobs to people, and they simply cannot afford to provide health insurance to their workers. So it's not the business owner's fault. Quite frankly, it's our state government's fault that we've got 230,000 people working every day, just like my mama, that cannot get health care. She knew something was wrong, and finally, finally, when my sister and I convinced her to go to an emergency room on a Sunday afternoon in late December, they found out that she needed a heart and a lung transplant because her congestive heart failure had gone so long. Medicaid expansion would benefit families like mine and families like those that you know of in Mississippi to get preventative care, to make sure that they are able to see a doctor before it gets too far gone. And I'm telling you today, we will expand Medicaid as one of the first things I do as governor of this state. It's not a partisan political issue either. 
It is for Tate Reeves, but it's not for the rest of this country. Oklahoma, Donald Trump carried every single county in the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma expanded Medicaid. South Dakota, a Democrat hasn't carried South Dakota in decades. South Dakota voters just expanded Medicaid. It's called common sense. And we're going to get it done in the state of Mississippi and begin that ball rolling on the first day I'm in office. The second crisis I want to talk to you about is a crisis of corruption. Crisis of corruption. You've seen the welfare scandal unfold before your eyes over the past couple of years in the newspapers. $77 million that you as business owners ought to be as mad about this as anybody else. $77 million diverted from education programs, workforce programs that could have helped the working poor, and given to such things as Brett Farr's $5 million volleyball court, or $1,300,000 to Tate Reeves personal trainer, the guy that teaches Tate Reeves how to do jumping jacks, got $1,300,000 of taxpayer money, and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars diverted misappropriated and plain out stolen from the people of Mississippi for pet projects, famous friends, buddies. We've got to clean up the corruption. I know many of you in the business community have come up and told me, Brandon, I want to support you, but Tate's so vindictive. That's what's wrong with Tate Reeves. That's what's wrong with the governor's office today. Let me make you a promise. If you're a business owner out there today, and you're nervous about the governor, and you're nervous about the governor's office, I want to put your mind at ease. When Brandon Presley's elected governor, you won't have to write a campaign check to come see me if you've got an issue with state government. You won't have to pay your way in the door to come and visit me if I'm your governor. And that's whether you voted for me or not. It's whether you support me or not. Because we are past today in the poorest state in Mississippi to have time for cheap politics to have time for this type of corruption that we see running rampant across the state of Mississippi. That's why I proposed a historic ethics reform package that will clean up an infected, corrupt system and return it back to the hands of the people of Mississippi. It's a shame and a disgrace. If I was Tate Reeves, I wouldn't be able to show my face if I twisted arms for a campaign check to get a meeting with me. Or I threatened people because if you don't give to me, there'll be a payback. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not what's right with politics. That's what's wrong with politics. That's what's wrong with the system. And I intend to clean it up. Clean it up. Disinfect the corruption once and for all. And return state government to the hands of the people of Mississippi. Now this campaign is a serious campaign. It's tight as a tick. This is going to be a close race. We're going to win November the 7th. And when we do, I say to you out there today, who support me and those who don't support me, those who are strong Democrats and those who are strong Republicans and fierce independents, I don't want to be a governor of just one political party. I don't want to be a governor that simply sits back and plays cheap politics. I want to be a governor for everybody. We have seen what partisan politics will get us. And it's got us in the ditch. It's got us a governor that is so arrogant that he bought himself a $4 million ice maker, has a lemon tree room in the governor's mansion, and a meditation garden. I don't know what a meditation garden is. I don't need one. I know I had to hit my knees by my bed and pray to God every night. I don't need a meditation garden. And I darn sure don't need you to fund it for me. So as I close, let me say this. I'm asking each of you, I'm asking each of you, as we go into the last 12 days of this campaign, to stand for what's right in Mississippi. Not the partisanship, but a governor that wants to reach across the aisle. I told a reporter yesterday, I'll get along better with the Republican House and Senate than Tate Reeves does. Because I respect them. And I realize that they have a job to do. As we go forward, I ask for your vote. I ask for your support. I promise you, from my little hometown of Middleton, population 1906, where I hope I'll be back to lay my head down Friday night for just a minute. I'll carry the values of hard work, families like the family I grew up in, and we will challenge the system in Mississippi.
and we will make sure that we cut taxes and get the sales tax off groceries, cut car tag fees, expand Medicaid, and most importantly, clean up a corrupt, bought, and paid for system. And when we win, in the words of that old Willie Nelson song, we're going to tell Tate Reeves and his bunch he can shut out the lights, the party's over. Thank you very much.